Hey guys, this is uh, Trenchy back again to bring you another video. And this time, um, we are reviewing a, uh, a movie from 1990, I believe. Yeah, 1990. Uh, by, um, one of my favorite directors. Uh, I think he might be my favorite director. It, him and Richard Donner are, like, neck and neck for that. And... Uh, that is, of course, uh, Sam Raimi. Um, yeah, uh, he did this movie. Uh, then, like, when you think of Sam Raimi, everybody thinks Evil Dead. You, you go to the Spider-Man trilogy. Or you might even bring up Drag Me to Hell. Because that one's still decently popular. But, yeah, usually when you're bringing up uh, Mr. Raimi, you're either going to Evil Dead or Spider-Man. But, he did a superhero movie first. Now, I don't, there are sequels, but I don't know if he did the sequels. But, there was a super movie, superhero movie he did first in, the, in 1990 called Dark Man, which is uh, very underrated. Um, I, I had seen it before, but it had been a long time, so I rewatched it uh, last night. And, uh, damn, it, it's good, man. It, it holds up for me. Uh, there, there are some parts that are a little wonky and don't really hold up, but it, it holds up. It's still a great story. Um, so, Dark Man, uh, let, let's just go over the cast real quick before I, um, get off track and shit. We got, uh, Liam Neeson in the lead role. We got Francis, uh, McDordham, uh, as the, uh, main love interest. We have Larry Drake as one of the main bad guys. Um, we have Bruce Campbell in the end as a cameo. Because it's a Sam Raimi movie. So of course there's going to be a Bruce Campbell uh, cameo. Um, we got John Landis in there. Uh, we got Dan Hicks from Evil Dead 2. Um, in there, and we got Neil McDonough as a cameo as well, uh, he has a small cameo, him and John Landis, but, um, yeah, I, I really like him as an actor, so I had to put him in as one of the notables, actually wrote down a couple names, um, so yeah, Darkman is about, uh, Liam Neeson, uh, is a scientist, and he is trying to, uh, be able to like put a picture into computer and then make a model of that picture a physical model like let's say he puts in a picture of a nose he wants to make a physical model of that nose that holds up that you could like wear and shit uh for for like victims who have been mauled and shit like that or burned um but the only problem is, uh, it uh, can only last a certain amount of time in the light. I forget how long. Th they say it's not really a long amount of time, but it's like in the movie that doesn't translate well in some of the scenes later. But, um, yeah, like, it can't hold for a very long time in the night light. It always melts. But he finds out in the dark it holds up just fine. So there's something about the light that, uh... That, uh, fucks it up. Um. So, him and, uh, Francis McDormand are, are going out and shit. And they have good chemistry. I really like the chemistry between these two characters. They felt real. It didn't feel too lovey-dovey, but at the same time, it didn't feel like they hated each other. They just had just the amount, like, of, uh relationship they just felt very comfortable around each other they felt very comfortable with each other which worked uh very very well for the movie uh we find out francis mcdormand has found out that uh uh this businessman she works with is paying off larry drake uh a gangster who we saw in the beginning of the film went up against another gangster and like wiped out his whole crew by sneaking uh, a gun in 
into this guy's fake leg. <laughs> this guy has, a, has one leg, he has a one leg, so they put like a machine gun <laughs> in his fucking wooden leg. <laughs> they just ripped it off and started shooting. It's so fucking great. That that opening's fucking great. And then the, the other gangster has like people coming out of the crates with cars and machine guns. It's a great opening. But yeah, um, find out the businessman is paying off uh, Larry Drake. Uh, Larry Drake's character, the gangster, Robert G. Durand. Robert G. Durand. He, he's paying off Durand to, uh, you know, um, he's letting Durand do things, and Durand actually works for him. He's paying off Durand so he can build his fucking empire and shit. So he's, he's working with the mob. He's corrupt. And, uh, the thing is, she has a paper showing this. But, um, she left it at, with Liam Neeson, and I don't know if Liam Neeson's lab is at his house, or, but somehow the paper ends up in his lab, I don't know if Liam, it, it's weird if he took it with him, or if the lab's just part of his house, I don't know, but it ends up at Liam Neeson's lab, and, um, the gangsters come in, and they... They horribly kill Liam Neeson's assistant. Like, they put, like, fucking plastic over his head so he can't breathe. And then when when Liam Neeson's begging to let him breathe, he, like, shoots the fucking assistant in the head with a gun. It's like, these guys are fucking terrible. And it is also shown that Robert G. Duran's, uh, the, the gangster, he likes to take people's fingers. He has, like, a finger collection. He has a fucking weird thing going on where he likes to take people's fingers. So, yeah, th these villains are very despicable and, and very hateable. So, they, they then dunk Liam Neeson into some chemicals. Uh, set a little thing up to, like, set up a fire. Then they leave, and then he gets up, and then the, the place explodes because the timer goes off. He goes flying out the building into a river. And everybody thinks he's dead. But he's actually picked up by the doctors who don't know who he is. Um, they they sever his fucking emotions so he can't feel pain. But the, the only problem is... Well, they, they sever his pain receptors, so he can't feel pain, but the only problem is that he can, um, that he just feels everything more emotionally now, like he can't control his emotions, his, his emotions are much stronger, like he gets angry real quick and he can't control it, he gets sad real quick, like everything's heightened. They said that really gives him, like, a uh, kind of super strength as well. So, um, Liam Neeson escapes from the doctors, sets up a laboratory, and aims, um, for revenge by scientifically recreating the faces of the gangsters. But also, um, with the photograph, because he sets up his lab again. But also, um, recreating his own face so he can, uh, uh, reconnect with Francis McDormand. But again, he only has a certain amount of time in the light, so, um, there's always a ticking timer on that. Um, that's essentially the, the plot. I, I enjoy this movie, I have a lot of fun with it. There's a lot of uh, really good tense scenes. Uh, Danny Elfman gives a great score, man, as always. Um, some of the the themes in here. And you can definitely hear a little bit of a, a precursor to... Um, I definitely felt some Spider-Man in the theme. And I'm pretty sure Danny Elfman did the, the Spider-Man themes as well. So... Um, that, that makes a whole lot of sense. Um, but yeah, I definitely felt that. But the, the, the themes are just great. The, uh, the score. 
Just solid score all around on that. Uh, solid score throughout the movie. Um, I really like uh, Liam Neeson's performance. He, he gives like a heartbreaking performance, man. Like you feel bad for the dude. Like it's it's some uh, sad shit, man. He's he really kills it, especially when he's um, dark man and he's going back and forth through his emotions, like he can't control his anger, and the sadness comes on. You feel that, and it all hits. And the prosthetic the prosthetic makeup on him is also just really well done. Uh, really good shit. Um, some of the editing's a little wonky, but I, I do like what they did with some of it. Like, when he gets mad and you see a bunch of, um, you see flashes of the carnival, flashes of being called a freak. Like, stuff is, like, changing around him and shit, like. Yeah, it's really, uh, well done. Uh, I really like that. Like, it, it's a little janky and doesn't hold up, but I, I still enjoy that. Uh, for sure. And, um, I really like that he doesn't really have superpowers, um, he has a little bit of super strength, but really his power is a scientific ability and to be able to recreate those faces and body parts. But even that only lasts a certain amount of time. Like, that's like his only power. Uh, I really like the villains. I wish the villains were a little bit fleshed out more and we had more scenes with them. Um... Durand was great. Uh, he served his job, and Durand was like a really hateable, forcible gangster. But I really would have liked the uh, the the sleazy businessman to be uh, filled out a little more. Cause in the end, he turns into like this cartoonish villain. But it's like it just comes out of nowhere. But I still love it. But it's just very uh, cartoonish at the end when throughout the movie he's just playing this like sleazy kind of understated character and then in the end he just goes all over the top and wacky like a uh, kind of looney tunes there at the end uh which was good it was still fun to uh see um i really like the kill where uh in Liam Neeson's uh dark man's revenge he grabs a dude in the sewer Grabbed one of the gangsters, bring him on the sewer, scolding him with water. And then... And then he, uh... Lifts him up and... Out of the sewer and forces him in front of a, a car. In the... In the fucking, um... Highway, and then he gets hit by a truck. I like that. Um, it's also an art scene in the editing where he's like laying in an alleyway, and you see the water because it's like raining like crazy, and then you see the water kind of like go over his eye, like they, they did like it. All the water was swirling into a hole, but now all the water's swirling into his eye, and we're like getting closer into his eye. I like that. Um, this is just a fun movie, man, and I get a lot of vibes from this movie. I get some of the uh, the question, of course, in Rorschach by the look. I get a little bit of the Hulk, you know, stuff like that, because uh, he's trying to cure himself. He's trying to, he thinks he's a monster, and there's a great scene where him and his cat... He has a cat that lives with him after he is burnt because uh, he lives in this abandoned warehouse and shit where he sets up his lab um, and the cat's like mean to him <laughs> like the cat seems like an asshole and keeps hissing at him but the cat's like his only friend 
<laughs> Besides when it goes out in the light to see uh, Francis McDormand. Uh, the, the cat's like his only friend. And he's just like, he starts freaking out the cat and he has... Because he goes, uh, his his anger gets the better of him and he goes crazy. And he starts smashing shit, but then he, uh... Which reminds me of the crow a little bit where the crow's having the flashbacks and he's kind of freaking out. He's like reliving his death. Uh, Liam Neeson smashing shit and then we see flashbacks to how he was burnt. And then he, he finally looks himself in the water and he calms down. But it's a, it's a great scene. He's trying to fight the the monster he feels he's be, he's become. Uh, which really calls back to like the universal monsters. In a way, like, um, you got a little bit of Frankenstein in there. Like, when he first comes back, he's kind of scared. And yeah, people are a little bit afraid of him. Like, we see Francis McDormand run away from him. And he's, like, scared and confused. So I got the Frankenstein vibes. Then I got uh, the Invisible Man vibes. Like, he's trying to cure himself. But he's slowly becoming something he's not. He's slowly getting, losing it, because he can't control his emotions. He's slowly, uh, you know, he thinks he's slowly becoming a monster. And he's trying to keep it under wraps. He's trying to fix himself. But he, uh, uh, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't know how, but he keeps trying uh, desperately. And then we have the Phantom of the Opera vibes with him and like Francis McDormand's character. Uh, there's a great scene where she comes into the werewolf house and he's hiding from her because he doesn't want her to see his real face. Uh, which uh, really gives me the Phantom of the Opera vibes off that. Um, it's also the Beauty and the Beast thing going on, you know. But, yeah, very, very much hearkened. I really thought about the Universal Monsters when watching this, and I I don't think that was an accident on Raimi's point, especially since Darkman has, like, these, uh, he has, like, a coat and a hat, and then he has, like, the, uh, the bandages. Um, like I said, I like the wearing faces angle. I thought that was cool. Uh, there's a couple things that don't make sense. There's a couple plows, like... How did he download that one henchman's head faster than he did his own when he started his own a while ago, you know? There's there's some things that don't make sense, but um the I, I the plot holes don't really affect it for me. You know, this is still a fun movie. I I give this movie I'll give this movie like a a seven. I think it deserves a seven. Or six and a half, but I think I'll go with a seven. This is a really uh, fun movie. Uh, Forgotten Gem for sure. And Liam Neeson gives a, a pretty boss performance in it. And that finale is just great. Really tense. Uh, the, the villain at that end is really fun. It's like... Everything's just really well done in this one. I mean, it's not bombastic or over the top, but it's a, it's a charming little story. It's very understated. And um, it, it tells the story it wants to tell. And it gives us a pretty good superhero story, if I do say so myself. Um, so, yeah, um... If you haven't, go check out Darkman, man. It's a, it's a good one for sure. Uh, really underrated, man. And yep, I, I guess that's all for today for sure. Uh, yeah, go, go check out Darkman. And, you know, <laughs> go check it out. But yeah, uh, you guys have a nice day. Stay frosty. This is Crunchy signing off. Beep bop boop.